new ways must be found to significantly increase the cohesion, efficiency, and transparency of the international criminal justice system beyond reforming and improving its system of procedure. Towards that goal, two avenues of action should be pursued. First, a large number of international criminal cases could be decentralized, I brought before local, ad hoc, internationalized or possibly regional courts that are located as close as possible to the population's concerns. Second, a number of investigative and judicial activities of the ICC should be devolved, i.e. conducted by the court, not in The Hague, but in the countries concerned. Let's say a few words about the two processes separately. First process of decentralization. Decentralizing cases that may fall within the ICC's competence in favor of local, ad hoc, or regional courts and Truth and Reconciliation Commission satisfies three necessities. Firstly, the court clearly does not, on its own, have the means and resources to try all war crimes, crimes against humanity and gen crimes of genocide, over which it may have jurisdiction. At most, it is able to prosecute a limited number of crimes committed at the highest levels of the political and military authorities of states or organized groups. With a few exceptions, all other crimes should fall under the jurisdiction of local or, where applicable, regional courts. Secondly, the more national authorities take part in the administration of justice, the more their citizens will learn to defend democratic values and expect evidence with international norms. In other words, by working closely with national courts, the ICC, sitting in The Hague, far from the concerns of local populations and authorities, will achieve greater transparency and will thus make a more effective contribution to the restoration of the rule of law. Finally, in the context of the progressive globalization of criminal law and procedure, decentralizations offer a potentially fruitful method for the international community to encourage states to respect universal principles of justice while preserving the diversity of their national legal traditions. Indeed, any process of decentralization must guarantee the most fundamental standards of international criminal justice. Accordingly, as states conform to these standards, a certain harmonization of national criminal law will be achieved. But equally, and perhaps more importantly, the decentralization process must also respect national legal traditions and their diversity. That said, a precondition for decentralizing the ICC's work is the ability to count on reliable courts, ones that are able and willing to administer independent, impartial, and effective justice. Countries recently affected by war cannot reasonably be expected to benefit from such a court. They often need to undertake major political and judicial reforms in order to restore democratic foundations and bring their institution into compliance with international standards. Clearly, such a process of reconstructions is time-consuming often taking several years, thereby failing to satisfy the requirement of expeditious justice. To overcome this difficulty, one solution is to continue with the past policy of establishing ad hoc international tribunals to try the intermediate and lower level accused. However, setting up such tribunals with their individually tailored mandates and rules, as a default response is an awkward, lengthy and costly process. It might therefore be more appropriate for the United Nations Secretary General to set up, within the United Nations, a committee composed of experts 
in international criminal justice charged with the following duties. Establishing and regularly updating a list of international prosecutors, judges and defense counsel specializing in international criminal justice who can be called upon short notice. Deploying them with domestic within domestic courts alongside national judicial actors to prosecute and try sensitive and complex cases, and coordinating the proper functioning of this court with other regional and international bodies, in particular the ICC. Furthermore, in line with a marked tendency towards regionalization of international law, in the longer term, permanent regional or sub-regional courts could be established in the more troubled regions of the world. The second process of delocalization. As a natural extension of the decentralization mechanism just described, a parallel process of devolution of certain activities of the ICC should be implemented. These activities would remain in the hands of the ICC, but would be carried out in the countries concerned or at least in the neighboring states, rather than in The Hague. For instance, one trial attorney per state concerned would be appointed right at the start of an investigation and would conduct its work in that state. He would be assisted by a local deputy and as many investigators as necessary. They would be responsible for independently conducting the investigation in that state and reporting regularly to the chief prosecutor on developments in the investigation. The chief prosecutor, as the guarantor of the unity of all investigations undertaken by the SEC, would remain in The Hague. Along the same lines, the trial chambers could conduct the trials not in The Hague, but in the concerned states, or else in the event of political instability in neighboring states. Devolutions at the trial stage would enhance the ICC's visibility in the field. It would also facilitate cooperation with local authorities and reduce the operating expenses of this court. There would no longer be any need to bring witnesses to The, to the Hague for hearings.